Okay, here we're going to look at the macromolecule nucleic acids. Keep in mind that this nucleic acid category is made up of both DNA and also RNA. We see DNA depicted here on the right and RNA depicted here on the left. We're going to go into a little bit of detail on how you'll be able to distinguish these two different types of nucleic acids. So starting off, nucleic acids in general, the main function is to store genetic information. It's in the genes. It's a blueprint for the building of proteins. DNA will be um, transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into an amino acid sequence, which will ultimately make a protein. This is responsible for transfer of information. It's a blueprint for new cells and a blueprint for the next generation. We see here two parents passing down to offspring, and the DNA, or the nucleic acids here, will allow that to be the blueprint for the next generation. We see certain traits, certain genes being passed on um, from the parents to the offspring. Now, uh, nucleic acids here. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's a double helix structure, and its structure was first proposed in 1953 by Watson and Crick. RNA is a ribonucleic acid, and it's a single helix. We see there's kind of one strand here. Now, both of these nucleic acids, their monomers, or what's the building block for these? In this case, it's nucleotides. That's the building block for nucleic acids. Here's a nice comparison between our RNA and our DNA. Remember, RNA is ribonucleic acid, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Sugar is ribose. So when we say ribose and deoxyribose here, that means without oxygen for DNA. And the sugar ribose here has that oxygen built um, bond to it. The bases are A, G, C, and U for RNA, and A, G, C, and T for DNA. So what does these letters stand for? Well, that's adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. And I had that one in blue because that's unique to RNA. For DNA, we still have adenine, guanine, and cytosine. Here we have um, thymine, and that's uh, unique to DNA. In addition, looking at these two structures, we see for the most part, um, RNA is going to be single-stranded for our purposes, and DNA is double-stranded. So that's another way we can kind of tell them apart. Key part here is if we look at our monomer unit, our nucleotides, uracil, that immediately indicates it's RNA, and we see thiamine, that immediately indicates that it's DNA. The distribution of these nucleic acids in eukaryotic cells, well, DNA is found in the nucleus, with small amounts in the mitochondria, and also in chloroplast. So if you're a plant cell, you have DNA in the nucleus, in the mitochondria, and also in the chloroplast. Animal cells will have it in the nucleus and the mitochondria. In contrast to that, RNA is actually found throughout the cell. Whether it's a plant cell or an animal cell, it's found throughout the cell. So RNA, single-stranded, basically for our purposes, there are some cases where it is double-stranded. And we should have the big circle with the extra here as we know thiamine is located. So we can clearly indicate that this is DNA and not RNA. Seeing the presence here, of uracil up in this corner, we see that that is uh, a characteristic that only RNA has. Now, I mentioned for our purposes, RNA will be single-stranded. Keep in mind that some viruses are actually double-stranded. It seems for double-stranded RNA, uh, so it does exist. Uh, we're just mainly going to look at it um, as RNA being single-stranded. Commonality between RNA and DNA, they're both negatively charged. And this process allows gel electrophoresis to separate DNA segments. We'll do more about this in the biotechnology uh, lecture series, but what this basically means, if we apply a charge, we have a positive charge here, because DNA and RNA are both negatively charged, they'll be drawn to the positive charge, which allows us to separate out fragments of these nucleic acids. We'll understand more in biotechnology why that's important, but for right now, just realize that they do have a negative charge because of their backbone, and that allows them to be separated here through the process of electrophoresis, which is involving a difference in charge and voltage.